Buongiorno, everybody. We are here today. Um, I'm Darina, and this is my kitchen. So welcome to Darina's Kitchen. Um, we are going to be doing this every day live at 11. I'm trying to do some new things here, make it a little bit more offerings to you guys using some new programs. So we're trying things out, so bear with me. Um, in the meantime, I also got a new burner, so no more blowing fuses. And um, today we're going to start the week out with some peasant dishes. Um, I really want to be able to um, share with you some of the recipes of my history, my heritage, and my 28 years of being a mom, almost 29, um, in making meals that are inexpensive and easy, but yet still really tasty and healthy. I keep seeing memes um, that are saying, oh, this is me before the quarantine and this is me after the quarantine. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna be healthy here. I'm gonna show you fun things, yummy things, and uh, reasonably priced things. So my new burner is turning, is warming up. So um, as this warms up, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we're making. So we are making stracciatella soup, which is an Italian egg drop soup. It's really yummy, really simple. My grandmother, my nonna, what I used to call Mama Grazia in Italy, um, she was actually my step-grandmother, but she's the only grandmother I ever knew over there, and she was amazing, amazing woman. So she used to make me, um, the, she used to just call it pastina, and sometimes she would put pasta in it, sometimes not, but it would be made with a broth, either a chicken broth. If you're vegetarian, you don't want to do any meat, then do a, do a nice vegetable broth. Um, and I actually already made my broth, so I'm going to explain that to you in a second. But you're going to use a broth, bring it to a boil, you're going to put in some eggs, and usually, historically, this is made with spinach, but you can use escarole. You can use any leafy green. Today, we're using kale because I don't have any spinach, and I'm not going out to the store where I could get sick just to get spinach, but we got kale, and we're going to use it up. Um, and then, of course, you need the all-important uh, grated cheese, Parmesan or Romano. I'm using Romano today because I just bought a half a wheel of it, so we got lots of it. Um, and so it's very, very simple, very tasty. You can make it just as is, or you can add some pastina to it, which I will show you um, what kinds I, one of the kinds I like to use um, if you want to make it a little heartier. So let's see if this is, it's starting to warm up. I'm going to get my broth. Hold on. One. So this is already cooling off. So one more thing I'm going to share is that we should be able to make more, sometimes we can make, more than one thing with something without letting it go to waste. So hang on, this is so cool because this is smaller than my old one. Wow, this is nice and warm. Okay, hang tight. I'm gonna just adjust my spacing a little. Okay, so what I did this morning was I took a pack of chicken legs. Chicken legs are wonderful. They're cheap, they're tasty, and they've got the bone in them. So because of that, you can make a couple of meals out of a pack of chicken legs. So right now we're doing the base of our soup with the chicken broth. Now, what I did was I boiled the chicken legs. So you can see how they're all kind of nice falling off the bone here. So we take them out. Because I'm not putting chicken in this soup. But now I have this really nice broth in here. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Hang tight. So I was a little behind prepping because I was working on some technical difficulties with my guest that I'm going to have on after this. And I see that he's in the, in the green room waiting. This is really cool. So I'm going to take a little strainer. This one's just big enough and strain my broth. because It has a little bit of, Oh, here's the sizzle. My pan is warm. Awesome. And take the gummy stuff. I'm just going to put this in the sink. Okay, so I've got this really nice chicken broth in here. So now, oh boy, I'm so excited. I'm going to get it ready. Let's see how I'm working all these new things that we're doing. Um, I'm just so excited about all the stuff we're doing. So let's do this. One thing you always got to remember, handles, never have them facing out. Always have them facing in or back. Because if a kid walks by or your husband, boom, it's on the floor. Somebody could get hurt. So I'm going to use, let's see, I think two or three eggs. Let's see. We're going to do one, two, 
eh, let's make this a nice and hearty one because it's going to be three of us eating. Now, this broth, I did let it cook down for a while, so it's a little bit. So I'm going to add just a little water to it. I do have more broth in the freezer, but this was pretty concentrated, so because I let it actually cook for a while. Okay, so we're going to do the awesome, cool, wonderful thing of beating our eggs. I'm going to put a pinch of pepper in there. Just a pinch, just a little, half a pinch, I'll just hold some of that back, of salt. And the most important part, some grated cheese. I'm going to put some good, two big pinches of Romano cheese. You know, I popped into um, last the last time I went out to the store. This, the girl who was, one of the girls who's assistant manager at the Trader Joe's, she's standing at the door, she's like, Oh my gosh, do you ever realize how much your face itches all the time when you can, when you when you can't scratch it? You can't touch your face. And it all of a sudden, and what I think that does is remind, shows us that how often we actually touch our face because we don't realize it. You know, we're moving our hair, we're doing whatever, and um and we don't realize that we're just actually scratching itches. Okay, so I beat my eggs and my cheese. Now, this is getting nice and hot. Not quite boiling. Okay, so ideally, you want this to be at a nice rolling boil. I don't know how fast this, this is the first time I'm using this thing. I don't know how fast this is going to, um, oh, but I do see little bubbles coming up. I'm so excited it's working. So, um, we're going to put these in. And what I'm going to do is right now, just so it starts cooking, is I'm going to go ahead and put some of my, beautiful kale that I already washed and cut up in smaller pieces. I'm going to throw this in. Let's see how much I want. And my daughter loves kale, so we're just going to throw it all in. Okay. And we're letting that cook a bit. So once that comes to a boil, then we're going to drizzle these egg drop, this egg into the hot, hot water. Because right now, just for the fun of it, not quite where I want it to be. So we're going to see, like I said, we're going to see how fast this comes. But in the meantime, I'm going to tell you about a couple other things. Shortly, I'm going to be bringing a friend of mine on. Um, his name is Giuliano. He lives in Ohio. And he's a huge fan of his Italian heritage. And so he's um, all involved in his... Um, Italian American community in he lives in uh, Warren, Ohio, I think it is. And but he'll tell you more when he comes on. And uh, but he's like on the committee of the fest, the Italian festival, and he um, does this. Uh, he plays this game that he's researched and learned how to play over the past few years. I'm not going to tell you yet, but it's a game that old guys play, kids play, everybody plays. And the only thing you need is your hands. It's actually just one hand, five fingers. I'm not gonna tell you anymore. So anyhow, all right. This is coming along. I see it cooking. Let me see if this is quite ready. You want this to kind of cook up right away. Oh, they're almost there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So anyway, this again, because my broth was already made, my chicken broth, my homemade chicken broth, with a little bit of, you know, I had a pinch of salt in there as well, not too much. But um, it's really very simple. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put this in, let it cook, and then we're going to talk about uh, stuff, and we'll come back and have it at the end of the show. I'll show you how nicely it's come to, uh, come to cook. Okay, so I think I can do this now. So all you do is just drizzle. I wish I could show you, but I really can't how it comes, but you'll have fun doing it. You're just going to drizzle this in around, and then just kind of, let it cook and it's going to kind of curdle up a little bit and it's going to cook in there and then it's going to uh, do its thing. So we are going to go right now. Now, well, actually we're not going to go yet. Real quick. Let me explain this. So you've got chicken broth. I had a couple dollars worth of chicken legs, those legs and chicken and fat and bones made my broth. So now this is a part of one meal. I'm going to come back to the chicken. One little, it was half of a bunch of kale. Kale's usually, I don't know, $1.99, if, if that, I don't even think, um, a bunch. So you figure, okay, so we used half a bunch. 
So a dollar's worth of kale, you know, part of the chicken, and then three eggs. So let's see, a dozen eggs, even if they're organic and they're expensive, they're still 30, maybe 30 cents each an egg. So 30, 60, 90. So one, two, maybe three dollars, and we're gonna have a meal for three people. So that's not too bad. On top of that, within that three, let's see, one, two, okay, yeah, three, four, three dollars. On top of that, with the chicken, so I'm going to show you what I do with it. Obviously, you take it, you're going to pull these little pieces of fat off the, that one piece of gunk, and you're going to, you know, take the meat off the bone. So I'm going to take that. Uh, you might as well get my hands all the way in. Take all the fat off, and you're going to take the meat off the bones. Oops, still warm on the inside. Okay. Anyway, you've got this beautiful meat. You can save this for later and make a nice, you can put it in your salad, put it in the fridge, put it on a salad, um, put it in a stir fry, put it in your pasta sauce. You can do whatever you want with it, but you've got now good yummy chicken. Mm. Oh, so tender, so good. You know, dark meat so much tastier. Like I'm not eating it now. Anyway, but you have a bit large component of another meal and we've only spent a couple dollars. This is, like I said, peasant food. Excuse me, I'm gonna wash your hands while I'm talking. This is the kind of food you eat when you're trying to just make something quick, easy, tasty, healthy, and traditional. This is cooking up already. Oh, look at the eggs. Okay, so we're gonna let this cook a little longer, but here you can see I've got my, my egg drop that has Beautiful flavor from the pepper, pinch of salt, but mainly the Romano cheese, and my kale. So I'm just going to let this cook a little longer because I want the kale to cook down. So I'm going to leave this here while we go play a game. So um, since I'm using a new program, I have to use my laptop. So you're coming with me. Thank you for coming. Woohoo! And we're going to sit down at Dorita's kitchen table and do something fun. So my friend Giuliano, he is um, on the line waiting to come on. I learned how to do the split screen interview. And hopefully if we get this right, well, let's see if I can straighten myself out here. If we get this right, um, we'll be able to show you how to play this game together. He's gonna teach me, so hopefully. So Giuliano, I know you're there. Let me see if I can put you on. This is kind of exciting. Oh, and I hear my, my, my soup cooking. Hey, hey. Okay. Hey, this is Giuliano. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Good morning to you. So, yes. what we've got here, guys, is this is Giuliano, like I was explaining to you before. Uh, Giuliano, why don't you take a minute and just tell us a little bit about you and you know who you are, where you're from, what you do, and all that stuff. Sure. Thanks for having me, Dorina. I'm really excited. So, as she said, my name is Giuliano Romeo. I'm from Warren, Ohio. Uh, my family, great-grandparents from Italy. Uh, Calabria, Naples, and Abruzzi. I am engaged to Ashley Alisco. We're getting married next year in October. I'm a maintenance man at Victory Christian Center. It's a local church. And I'm studying to also be a teacher, and I've substitute taught. I'm involved, like Dorina said, with the Warren Italian Festival Committee. And uh, in Lowville, Ohio, we have a little club called the Mount Carmel Society. It is the second longest club in the United States. We're celebrating 125 years this year with our festival. There's a lot of tradition there. And like Doreen said, we're gonna learn to play Mora today. Ah, see, I didn't tell them the name of the game. Oh, <laughs> I screwed that up. No, that's what you're here for. Oh yeah, it's a great game. If you are if you like to be loud and talk with your hands, which we're Italian, that's what we do, that's what it is. Uh, you're gonna like this game. All right, so I did a little research because Juliana was telling me about this game, and it's not a game I was actually familiar with, although when I saw it, it did look familiar. So I've probably seen it somewhere um, sometime. So apparently it's a game that dates back to, what is it, biblical times? Yeah, like ancient Rome. Uh, they okay. would play during seasons times when they were bored. When war wasn't going on, they would basically, it was like kind of like casting lots. Instead, they use fingers. And then it came, it came down through generation after generation, and it was even banned in Italy for a while because there was a lot of fights that were going on. Uh -oh. So 
um, as far as kids are concerned, they would relate this to rock, paper, scissors. Yes. All right. So do you want to explain it? And then I'll see if I can do it here sure. with you. I'll see if I can get myself in the middle of the camera here. Why don't you do the same? There we go. That's okay. good. Yes. So how you play Mora. So you have up two opponents. Me and Doreen are playing each other. And the object of the game is to guess the sum that you want to make on her fingers. And you're going to yell them at the same time. So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, Darina is going to throw. I'm saying I want to make the number five. Okay, so I would say I'm guessing Darina is going to throw out three fingers. So I would throw out two of my fingers and yell. And I'm going to throw out four. Well, if Darina wants oh. to make three, if you wanted to make three. I, oh, that's right. So I have a number. Yes. So I have a number in my head. So at the same time that you're thinking a number of five, I'm mm -hmm. thinking a number of seven. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So if Darina throws out all five of her fingers and yells seven. I throw out two, and she's yelling seven, seven at a time. I'm yelling three, but five and two is seven. Darina gets the point. All right. So, so how we would do this? So let's do it now. So, it, so how do you start? I mean, does somebody say go? Well, or? typically, because you're what I do is for the newer people, I'll count it off: one, two, three. We shoot. But normally you just go. You start. I'll do a little uh, Italian for you. I go set the chingue say ye. That's how they play. It's quick. Okay. <laughs> All it's right. Quick. So we're gonna do this in Italian. Okay. All yeah. right. So let me know when you got the number you want to try to get, Darina. Okay. You tell me when you're when you're ready. ready. So go ahead. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Set the. There, you got it. Oh, Ooh. crap. I put four up and you did too. <laughs> it was a little late. It was a little late, but I'll what? give it to you. I'll well, you know, we got to count for the um the lag in the internet. But anyway, right. okay, there so then go. what do you do? You just keep going? Yeah, so you got the point. And so if we were – normally you play with teams of five. And what you would do – so you beat me. I was the one guy. You moved to my teammate, the next guy, and you would go okay. down the line. It's the first to uh, 15 points. All right, so now let me ask you a question. Right yeah. now we've got lots of kids at home, lots mm -hmm. of grown-ups at home that are by themselves. Maybe they don't have 10 people to play. So how – I mean, can you do this with just two people? Just like yeah, you, you and me. That's the three, three, first to three point, whatever you want to do. You could – it doesn't So we could just keep going. So, oh, yeah. so let's – let's. so what happens is if – um. all right, so let's just say you're picking – let's go back to that same number. You had what number? I had – I threw – I was – I put out four fingers. I was yelling seven. Okay, and I put out four fingers. I was yelling eight. Okay, so yes. let's just say I put out uh, two. So neither one of us is right. It didn't come out to right. seven. It didn't come out to eight. So nobody gets a point? Nobody gets a point. You re-throw again. Okay. So um, are there any websites or YouTube videos that actually describe how to play this game? Yes, there is some. I found that one. Uh, if you just type in more on YouTube, there's – it's this older gentleman. He's uh, just talking about – it's just pictures and him explaining the game and how his grandpa taught him and how the old guys would just be out on Sundays around a tree playing for bottles of wine or whatever. Uh, this is the name of the game here, people. Yeah. And he's explaining how he remembers the sights and sounds. And if you ever, if the people out there ever been to Italian festival or any type of club or anything and heard a lot of yelling and old men, that's what was going on. It wasn't a fight. <laughs> that's what was going on. Yeah, that's really neat. So that is something, people. It is basic, you know, 2 through 10, right? Is that yeah. the numbers you play? Mm -hmm. So 2 through 10, um, kids can play it. It's simple arithmetic. Um, they're throwing out numbers, so it's a little bit of guessing. It's a little bit of competition. And it's something they can do with nothing but at one hand, with five fingers on it. Right. No? Especially during this quarantine, you need something to do. Start playing more and get everybody into it. It's a fun game. We host tournaments uh, throughout. And uh, like I said, I'm part of it with the festival committee. So if you get good enough during it, you could win one of these. You could win one of these bad boys. Oh, I could get a trophy. Woo yep. <laughs> All right. Now I have one more question. We're back. Oh, um, they didn't know what this game was. So where did this game, what part of Italy is this game more popular in? Yeah, normally in the north, not in the south. Yeah, my uh, cousin went down there and asked, hey, you want to play some more? And they looked at him like, what are you talking about? We don't do that down here. Oops. <laughs> so it's more of a northern game. 
Okay. So if you're Northern Italian, see, I tend to show people mostly stuff that's Southern Italian, but this is something that is ancient from, you know, Roman times. So Rome is kind of central Italy, but so it was obviously central and up. Um, I'm sure there's some people down South who play it, but that doesn't mean everybody can't play it, whether you're Italian or anything else. Mm -hmm. So look it up, Mora, um, and you'll find it. I saw it on YouTube. I've seen it elsewhere on the internet. So look it up, find the rules and start playing. And it's something that you guys can do family competitions, even at the, even at the kitchen table. Exactly. And that's what Doreen's message is all about, coming back to the table. And I support that. When she told me, it's, I'm very uh, passionate about it. We thank need to get you. our family together. We need to get back to the table for sure. Grazie, Giuliano. You know, doesn't he have right. the greatest name, Romeo, or in Italian, Romeo? Giuliano Romeo in Italian, so so beautiful, um, and even in English. So, uh, you know, you can't forget that. So uh, look up the game, have some fun, listen to what he said, what he said about getting back to the table. See, it's not just me. <laughs> hey, and then there you go. We're living the Italian life. There it is. Right? Italian That's life. Cool. Exactly. Yeah, the Italian life, my apron. <laughs> <laughs> or grembiule, as they call it in Italian. Oh, yeah. All right. it's, it's fun. Well, it's good. If you also, I'm going to invite Doreen out to Lowville. Anyone who wants to come to Ohio, celebrating 125. There's all kind of rich tradition. We got bocce, mora. And if it's also, too, I'd like everyone to try to look up what the baby doll dance is. We're trying to find out where it originated from in Italy. It's an old tradition. So look that up, too. Baby doll dance. Okay, we're going to check that out. And I haven't heard of that one. So that's yep. not something from my area. But then again, every region, every, north and south, individual regions, and even down to individual cities and towns have separate and new and different traditions. So, you know, we should all know what our, um, you know, what our traditions are. So look them up, everybody. Okay. Well, Giuliano, thank you so much for coming and visiting with us. Um, this was a lot of fun. You know, so one last time. Ready? Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Here we go. One, two, two Chingway. What'd you got? Chingway, I got you that time. Ah, oh, you got me. All, All right. right. I'll let you leave as my guest, as the winner of the game. Great. And um, I'll definitely talk to you soon. Maybe we'll have um, Giuliano on some other time. We'll talk about some Italian food or oh, something. I love it. Appreciate it. Are you familiar it. with stracciatella, the soup I just made? What's that? Have you had stracciatella soup? No, i would never had that before. It looks oh, good. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, you're going to have to make it for your, your girl a friend, as they say in Italian. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> or actually, it would be a, in Italian, it would be fidanzata. See. Your fiance. So you're, but they, they call, as soon as you're a girlfriend over there, you're a fiance, as they call it. It's oh, cool. I know. My, my shot. Got to make a shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. And I will be talking to you soon. Thanks, Darina. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. It was great. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Well, wasn't that fun? I got to do an interview. This was so cool. I'm so excited. Um, you know, something new. Um, this is really um, exciting me. We're going to be doing other things like this. We're going to be doing um, having other guests on. I've got some really fun stuff planned for the week. This is going to be my show. So, like I said, you know, here we cook, we eat. We commune, we share our joys and sorrows. We do everything important in life happens right here at the table. Um, you know, so we're going to be here every day live at 11 at my table, at my counter, getting ready to come to the table. Um, you know, and we're going to have some fun doing it together. Um, you see, I don't like using the computer as much because my, my eyeglasses glare. And you know what? I can take them off for a minute. Hey, there. I can't see you, but you know. Anyway, um, good morning, everybody that's signing on. This is really excited to me. Um, so anyway, so I want to share something with you before we go back to the soup. I got to put the glasses on. Sorry, can't can't think straight. Um, we, I got something for you guys to do. So you know how um, we're all ranting and raving about not having enough of this. Yeah, what's this? Yep, what everybody's life is worried about is having empty toilet paper rolls. Okay, so we're all stuck in our houses. We're probably going through more toilet paper than usual. Save these. And I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons this week. Every day we're going to have the Toilet Paper Chronicles, and I'm going to show you what to do with these toilet paper rolls. So today, the first thing is we're going to make some things that you're going to save for the summer for who goes camping 
or who does like um, bonfires or the fire pit in the backyard, or even right now, some places are still chilly and you got a fireplace going, you take this and you're gonna take something else that costs nothing. Who's got a dryer to dry your clothes? Who's got dryer lint? <laughs> dryer lint, it's such a wonderful commodity. Ours is full of dog hair. <laughs> But anyway, dryer lint. So we're going to shove the dryer lint in the um, toilet paper roll. Okay? You can leave them like this, or you can just, you know, kind of fold in one end and the other, but, you know, and do it like this, which is also a great way to make a little gift. You can use this as gift wrapping. You can take a toilet paper roll and, um, you know, just kind of fold it in on one side, fold it in on the other side. And, you know, put a little ribbon around it, and you've got a little gift, and you can decorate this with paint. We're actually going to do that later in the week. I don't know why I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to the toilet paper and the lint. Isn't this awesome? So these are two things. So what you do is when you want, you have, you make a whole bunch of these and keep them in a basket, either by the fireplace or by the door, so when you're ready to go outside, you grab these. It's awesome fire starter. These babies. So all you do is you hit your match right here. And it goes poof, because we all know that lint in dryers causes a lot of fires. So why not put it to good use and take that lint out, put it in a toilet paper roll, save them. You know, you actually want to leave someone, at least one side open so you can light the lint. And you put it, you know, keep them in a bag or a box or whatever. And boom, you're ready. Let's see, that's how you can see it better. You're ready to light a fire when you need it, not when you don't want it. But it'll, it's also a good way to help you remember to take the lint out of the dryer because sometimes we forget, and that's when it becomes dangerous. So how do you like them apples? So toilet, of course, now I've got crumbs on my notebook. So anyway, so um, every day we're going to have, we're going to come up with, I've got a few and I'm looking for more. So if anybody has a great idea on what to um, do with the empty toilet paper rolls, send them to me. Um, Oh, look at this. Some things use empty toilet paper roll, put doggy treats in the middle, then fold the ends to close them and donate them to the animal shelter. It gives the dog something to do during the day, provides them a special treat. Hey, I like that idea. You know, I have to give that to my Louie, you know, who's always barking in the background. Because then it's almost like, you know what, a makeshift Kong. They're going to rip through it and get their treat out. And okay, then you can throw it away or you can throw it in the fireplace until you start it. But hey, cute idea. So, you know, there's a lot of things we can do. So we might as well find ways to be creative, you know, with the kids home and stuff, we have, you know, you know, there was um, something I was reading by a teacher, by an educator who was saying, you know, right now, we don't know. I mean, the college kids, most of them are done for the semester. They are staying home and studying at home. And my daughter's going through that craziness of being up in her bedroom and studying or, you know, occasionally, but I'm making too much noise down here for her. So, you know, She's got her comfy desk up there and, and she's doing her work. But for little kids, you know, people are freaking out. What am I going to do with my kid? They're going to be behind. Look, the whole world is behind. So who do you think you're going to be behind? Really? You know, we need to stop worrying. You know, in the days of, um, I, you know, I, I just loved Little House on the Prairie. And I recently watched an episode of, um, oh, what was it? The other show Michael Landon did, um, the, the, oh, Highway to Heaven, where he's like the angel. And it made me start thinking again about Little, Prairie, Little House on the Prairie. I used to love the books. I used to love the show. But you know what I liked about it the most? I liked the things they did and the way they lived their life. You know, um, the show was, you know, it was all kind of, the show was more corny, I think, than the books were actually really good. If you get the chance, read the books. Um, but, um, you know, how they made stuff, how they made stuff from scratch. They learned at home before they had the little one-room schoolhouse. You know, we made it through centuries. You know, Abraham Lincoln read at night by a candle. He was self-educated. You know, so many people, I think mostly, um, you know, but there's the stories. I mean, so many people have taught themselves. We are so blessed to be able to learn because of the internet. So let's take these times. I'm hoping to bring to you things that you guys can learn, but have fun doing it. Just like I always say in the kitchen, cooking should be part of the party, not the chore before the party. Learn something that you're learning how to be healthy. You're learning how to be frugal. You're learning how to be um, creative. You know, there's so many fun things to do right now. So take advantage of it because you're not going to be behind. You're going to be in the same mode 
as everybody else. So if I'm in third grade right now and I'm behind for third grade in my reading, well, guess what? I'm not behind any of the other kids unless they're more self-motivated than me. But really, truly, the teachers are prepared for this. They know what to do. They know how to get kids back on track. So, you know, give it a break. Let it go. Enjoy this time home with your kids. Stop whining and crying about, oh, I got to work or I got to this or they're in my face or that. You know what? There's so many things to do with them. I raised six. I know. So anyway, um, one of the other things I was going to bring up, completely different subject. So the game we just did was for everybody. The soup we did is for everybody. But moms and ladies, you know what? Get up in the morning right now. We're all stuck in the house, but that doesn't mean we need to be in our sweats and our grunge. Some days, like today is a rainy, yucky day. Yeah, it's fun to be in our sweatpants and curl up on the couch and watch a Hallmark movie. And I love that, so don't, I'm not making fun. But get up in the morning, do your thing. Okay, yeah, I washed my hair and it was still a little wet, so I'm in scrunch mode today because I was, you know, rushing to take care of you guys and I was having technical difficulties getting my guest on the um, the other side of the thing here, but um, we got it. <laughs> but put, some, put even just a little drop of makeup on, put some eyeliner on, a little blush, something. When you pass a mirror, don't look at yourself and go, oh, because you know what? You know what it's like. Every time you go into the bathroom or pass the mirror in the hallway or whatever, you look at yourself and you're like, oh, I'm gaining weight. I'm doing this. I look like crap. I got to wash my hair, but I don't feel like it. I'm not going anywhere. So what, matter, what difference does it make? You know what? It makes a difference for your own self, for yourself. Do something. Whether you're makeup, if you don't wear makeup, that's fine. But I'm just saying, do something to make yourself feel better. You know, okay, so you know what I did yesterday? I was going through a box of junk in my little other extra bedroom that was gonna be my office and then it became another junk room. You know how that goes. So I'm clearing it out because that's gonna be my office. You maybe see, see me doing videos from in there soon. But I had this hanging thing that you put in, you can hang and put in the closet or on the back of a door or something that has little pockets in it and you put jewelry in it. And I was using it, but Angelina had asked me, she goes, mom, do you have one of, I want to buy one of those things. I said, I've got one, I'll give it to you. Because when, of course, this was before when she was down at school, she thought it'd be a lot easier in her limited space in her dorm room to hang this thing with all her jewelry in the closet. So I pulled one out, I had it, and I only had a few things in it. One of the things was this cool necklace. See, so my cool glittery pink, I don't know if you can see it, but my pink like rhinestone necklace. Um, and I put it on, I'm like, okay. You know, of course, I've already got my other necklaces on. It's in the middle of everything. Let's move this one over and move that one there so you can see them all. But anyway, whatever. But I put it on. Wear a piece of jewelry. Put something on that makes you smile. Um, you know, we don't need to leave this stuff just for when, you know, we're going out. Because you know what? We ain't going out right now. So, you know, we're not going for a stroll in piazza, which means town square. If you're not Italian, you don't know that word. Um, so... Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do just to cheer up your own surroundings. So if I'm looking a little nicer, maybe my husband's going to, who's working down the basement in his office, he's going to come up and say, oh, don't you look cute? And I'll say, oh, thanks. And it makes a moment. Okay. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, you know, evening gown, but do a little something for yourself. Um, you know, that makes a huge difference in our lives. And, uh, this is the time, you know. Play with new hairdos. Bleach out your bangs. Let's see who else does it. So anyway, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's go back to the soup and see where we stand or where we're going to sit to eat it. All right. So let's move the notebook over. And let's go back to the stracciatella soup. We are putting this right here. Back in the kitchen. Boom. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. This is a bubbling. So now when you make this with... Um, when you make this with spinach, spinach wilts down a lot smaller. This is going to be a little fluffier today. But look at this. The, the kale is all nice. And the eggs. Let's get the broth. No broth. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a nice little lunch. So I'm going to bring this over, show it to you all. Oops, can you see? I'm going to put an actual photo. Whoops, I'm going to spill the soup. But anyway, actually, let's see if I can do it this way. Oh, there you go. Check it out. 
you can see my super. So this is stracciatella. It is peasant food. It is so yummy. And if you want to make a little pastina, so I'm going to show you real quick. So I'm going to come back over to you. So these are some bags. Pastina in Italy means little pasta, okay? So pastina, there is a brand, I mean not a brand, a name of a type of little pasta that you can see at the grocery store and it says pastina. But pastina we actually refer to as pretty much any little pasta. Pasta, you know, like I'm Dorina, Dora, Dorina, little Dorina. I wish I was little, but anyway. So see, like this one is the little stars. That's what's called Stelline. Oh, you can see it right way. Cool. This one is little teeny. You've seen Didalini. These are two Betty. These are little teeny tube cut off. These are great. Or you can just take some spaghetti and break it into one inch pieces and throw it in. Or you can even throw it in long if you like it that way in your soup. I would be like, you know, noodles in your soup. Any kind of pasta you want to put in there is just a variation. You can do it however you want. But just like this, you've got protein in your eggs. You've got a vegetable. You've got chicken broth. Or, again, you can use vegetable broth. But it's a nice with that with a piece of nice crusty bread, mm, good stuff. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm gonna let you go so you can go make some of the soup for lunch. And I'm going to, in a few after it cools down, I'm gonna call Pasquale and Angelina down for, or up, up for him and down for her for lunch. And um, we're gonna have it with some good Italian bread that I've got, that I've been saving in the freezer. Although I've got some of it out because I always have good bread. Um, so that's it. So I hope you guys had fun today and don't forget to make your toilet paper tube fire starters and look up the game of Mora, M-O-R-R-A. And if you would, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Darina's Kitchen. Please join my Darina's Kitchen Facebook page and please sign up for notices for when I go live because then you'll know ahead of time or you can be really cool and smart and set an alarm on your phone every day for two minutes to 11 so you can be ready to watch us live at 11. Okay so coming to you from Darina's Kitchen on Darina Vision. I don't know that's just my joke but anyway um, you know we're getting back to the table. We are teaching people how to live real life one table at a time we're eating good, we're being together, we're living the Rosetto effect because it's not what you eat, it's how you eat it together. Have a good day. Ciao. So now if I can figure out how to end this broadcast. Boom. Have a good one. <laughs>